What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PBC Den Podcast, your home for over 250 episodes of the world's first and longest running Amazon advertising podcast. Uh, we're here to make your Amazon advertising life a little bit easier and a little bit more profitable. Uh, with so many episodes, you can imagine uh, you can get it lost easily. What we've done for you, we have a link in the description of many of our episodes categorized and ranked for you. So if you're looking for our SEO episodes or your conversion rate episodes or our product page optimization episodes or bid optimization episodes, you can find all of them easily. Uh, today, as you can see behind me, uh, we've got a brand new dashboard inside Amazon, uh, which we are going to break down. Uh, good friend Mansoor from Incrementum Digital is back on the show. It's always so great catching up with him, uh, digging into some new features of Amazon. And let's jump in and talk about what this new customer loyalty dashboard is and how it can help improve your Amazon sales. Let's jump in. I've launched campaigns and picked keywords. I've got my bits, set placements too. Now bad mistakes. Mansoor, it's always so nice to catch up to see how you're going. And so, how are you doing? I first of all thank you for having me back here. Uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing pretty good. Busy days. What's what's good? What's good? Well, I have been yeah. uh, training for a year now. <laughs> it's the, no by, yeah. by training I mean I have a trainer. So kind of it was the anniversary of working with my trainer. That's a big uh, deal, sticking it, with it for a year. Yeah, exactly. I used to do it twice a, um, twice a week. Afternoon, we moved it this week to early morning, 7 to 8 a.m. So I'm, I'm pretty feeling good about that. So that is good. Wow. Yeah. That's great. A, a lot of people start trainers and then just uh, immediately stop after like 60 days. of like, I've, I've had enough. No, for me, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I have done it in the past, but <laughs> not anymore. How about you? What is, what is good for with you? Mm, I've also recently started getting back in shape. Uh, oh, nice. Finally started running again. I, I gained a lot of weight when I had a baby. So I, I, ga I gained, a, I gained a lot of dad weight, uh, just like a lot of mindless snacking and I'm finally getting that under control. So that's good. Nice. What's the longest you have run? Uh, I don't know, 25 miles or so. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I, I did half for... marathon actually last year, yeah. July. Wow. I, I know I, I was done with the half marathon. I'm looking people who are running for the full marathon. I'm like, how you guys are doing it? I'm done. <laughs> dead. I can't, I can't walk anymore. Yeah. We should, yeah, do, we should do, true. we should try to do our first marathon together somewhere. We should. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would love it. Let's and do re it. Re record a podcast while doing it. While you're running, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Mansoor, I'm excited today. Uh, it's an interesting kind of episode, but it's something that's pretty useful. You know, I think if someone's out there listening to the show, they want to stay on the pulse of a lot of advancements uh, inside Amazon advertising, and we're going to deliver that today. Um, so, today we're doing customer loyalty data first reaction. Uh, so this is brand new. In fact, I only found this in about, you know, one out of five accounts have access to this new data, customer loyalty data. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to look at it, describe what's in it, break it down, uh, and talk about how this can inform 
and react to different activities to basically boost sales. So yeah, so I'm super stoked to, I'm super stoked in general that Amazon is releasing more and more things, more and more data points for us. You know, a lot of times it's like launch this campaign, it'll help with X reason. And now we actually have data to track that reason. So things like repeat purchases or winning back at risk customers, like it's giving us some more data into that. Um, so yeah, so let's jump in really quick. Uh, so this is a brand analytics report and let's just kick right into it. Uh, the first thing that we see uh, is what basically, I have it pulled up on screen. Uh, first of all, in, Amazon actually announced this, I think two or three weeks ago in Amazon Accelerate. They just showed, they just mentioned that we are going to release this customer loyalty analytics. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, sure, do it. But I got access to this last week and I'm like, this is more than what I expected. They are mm. giving you more information to monitor, to see different uh, metrics that are helpful. But what we are seeing here is, if you have different brands, you choose your brand, the reporting range, which it gives you in as mon weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. And from there, you can see the total number of customers in that time period. Top tier customers, which I think uh, in the next slide, we will get into more detail of what they are. How many top tier customers you had in that time period? The promising customers, at least customers, and the number of vibrating customers. Mm -hmm. So fairly straightforward, right? Uh, it's giving us customer segments. So it's sort of giving us total. Uh, and it also gives us a cool uh, percentage of the total. So like how many top tier customers do I have? Mid range customers and sort of bottom tier uh, customers do I have? Uh, and then of course, how it changes over time. So already we're starting to plant the seed of this is going to allow us to track the movement of customer loyalty via these four segments over time. Um, so it shows you your customer composition. And let's actually define what each group is. Because right below that, we have customer segments defined in a pie chart for us. So it's the same data, but now in visual format. So as uh, I'm going to go over this for anyone who is listening to podcasts for top tier, it is mentioned as customers who purchase recently and spend the most, most of these customers buy frequently. So these are your best customers purchase recently. They are spending more on Amazon, which they are good, uh, high quality customers mm -hmm. promising. They are customers who purchased recently, but occasionally and spend above average. For at risk, at risk customers, you have customers who haven't purchased recently nor frequently with varied spend. And finally, we have hibernating, which is customers who haven't purchased in long time, purchase infrequently with varied spend. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so what do you make of this? Like as we start to, you know, we have the numbers here, the total count of each group, and then we have it in visual format. And then of course, when you're inside brand analytics and you're mousing over this, it'll tell you the same information, the percentage of each group. But right off the bat, you know, what does this tell us? Like try to interpret this, you know, we have very tiny top tier for this particular customer. I think the number was like 4%. Uh, we had about 48% promising, uh, and then we had about 27% at risk, uh, and then maybe, you know, 23% hibernating. So just based off this information, what does this start to tell us about this particular brand during this time frame? Well, I'm thinking out loud here is yeah. that, well, from seeing that top tier is being really low percentage, I don't know if it's around 4 or 5%, it seems like that uh, customers are not purchasing from this brand much. There could be few reasons, right? One could be that they don't offer so many, their catalog is really small. They don't mm -hmm. have products that customers will get back to that. Definitely, this is not a consumable product. Otherwise, if it was consumable, this top tier would be much higher in terms of the percentage. Yeah. And 
based on top tier that Amazon says these customers are, most of these customers buy frequently, it means they are valuable customers. They are high end customers, kind of, I, I would uh, name them. Seems like they are kind of, they value what they purchase. And maybe your product is not as good as the market, as other products in the market. That is why you have a lower top tier. I don't know if this is a good uh, kind of thought for that, but this is what just comes to my mind about mm-hmm. this brand. Yeah, interesting thoughts. So yeah, I think there's a definite component of product market fit baked into all of these widgets that we'll be looking at of product market fit. Because on one hand, you know, if you have a deep catalog, if you have a lot of products that people would really enjoy and continue to come and buy back, you would assume there, if you had two brands, one with a really deep catalog, one with really complementary products, one with a brand that resonates with people that wants them coming back again and again, versus one that's maybe more, you know, you don't even care who's selling it, you're just buying the thing and then forgetting about who you bought it from. You know, it's sort of like a marketing, positioning, branding, catalog type component. And I see time and time again, the most successful customers are the ones investing in those brand assets, investing in uh, product launches to expand their catalog. So I would imagine like that brand that is doing those activities is going to have a bigger top tier. And of course, you know, the, the classic case, it's like way cheaper to keep your customers than it is to acquire new ones. So you know, we look at branded traffic versus non-branded traffic. And of course your branded traffic is going to convert, you know, you get like a 5% A cost, 3% A cost, whereas your non-branded traffic for the same product might be in the forties or fifties or 60% A cost sometimes. So whenever I see uh, a company with really strong brand, like if I were to pick a, you know, any commerce company that I would want, I would want one with a really strong brand that, is in really investing in that customer lifetime experience. And that's sort of what this is highlighting to us. So it sort of gives you a pulse on that. And it almost gives us a pulse on advertising strategy, which maybe we can say for just a little bit, but you know, you can start to imagine, you know, let's say I do have a deep catalog and I do actually have a lot of products, but maybe they're new and I'm just getting started. You know, it could be an indicator of activities to do. Uh, We'll come back to that because we're about to be hit with our first activity here. So let's break down this next section, uh, new and potential customers, repeat customers. We have some data on each one with a big fat button in the middle. Um, so break down your reaction to this page. Like, uh, what, what are we actually looking at here? So uh, it gives the new customers the number of orders from new customers and the sales. Potential new customers. So the great thing that I see about the section for the new and potential customer is that Right there, you have a create promotion, right? Mm -hmm. It's giving you Amazon based on the data that they have. They say there are, you have this potential for new customers that you are not taking advantage of. How you could do that? They are, there's this button here. You can create promotion and it takes you to the uh, branded tailored promotion. And in the section for the new customers, you could give a discount any, any number that you want to kind of incentivize those new customers to purchase from you. So it's a, it is a good kind of overview of for you understanding what you can gain from this promotion if you run it and what would be the potential, probably potential sales. Yeah. So that's our first sort of action item from all of this data. Uh, we were saying uh, before we hit the record button that a lot of this data seems to queue up brand tailored promotions where it's like, look at your segments. Why don't you serve this segment uh, with the promotion? Uh, and what's cool about this is it's saying potential new customers in your face for this particular brand. Uh, it said that during this time frame, we had 477 new customers who purchased 489 orders. I got 12,000 in sales, but then it immediately follows that up with there were 2,300 people, 2,300 people who were interested in products like yours, but they have not yet purchased, um, which they're telling you, Hey, go after these people a little bit harder because look at that huge market that you can go after. You know, this is 
five times more than my existing customers that I got my new customers in this range. So I could potentially increase my new customers with a brand tailor promotion. So when you press that button, if we jump over to those brand tailored uh, promotions, they added some new ones even within the last week or so. Um, and they hit you right there with potential new customers, um, which is really great. Customers who have clicked on your brand storefront or products or added products to their cart in the last 90 days, but have not yet purchased from your brand in the last year, um, which they're telling you, hey, maybe, maybe go grab these people. They also give you brand cart abandoners. So they give you some tools to try to go after these people with a promotion. So yeah, that, that's sort of the task that Amazon has given us with this customer loyalty is saying, this is a segment, here's your opportunity, go serve them with a brand tailor promotion. Um, and actually, Mike, the, the other thing that it actually ties this to PPC is that if you see that potential customers are high, it shows you that you could take advantage of a sponsor display, yeah. target customers who viewed your product detail page for your brand and sell them kind of advertise, target your product toward them, right? In DSP, it's a whole another game. You have more control. But if you just want to tie this to sponsored ads, here you can see the potential of targeting those people who have viewed your uh, products, 24 55 people, go ahead, create a sponsor display and see what the results are. And the other thing that's actually mentioned, the potential, it says, for, I guess, for 90 days, you can go with 90-day windows, right, instead of 30 days. It could give you some insight into, go, right. this is the number for 90 days. You, you could go with 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, try all of them, but 90 days probably would be the best uh, scenario case here. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, people should be running brand tailor promotions anyway. So what I think is interesting about this is it gives you a data point to give, give you more confidence that, yes, I should be running a brand tailor promotion. Uh, later, we're going to see another widget, which is actually going to allow you to track the impact. So the next thing you would do here is you would look at these buckets and you'd say, OK, potential new customers. Boom. There's 2000 new customers in this time frame that I could have grabbed and gained market share. Uh, they also show like repeat customer stats as well. Um, and which we can also run a brand teller promotion for. And again, what's cool about this is in the next widget, we're actually able to track that. So uh, let's say you wanted to create brand teller promotions for repeat customers uh, and set up some advertising campaigns like a sponsor display going after repeat customers. Previously, that would have been difficult to track. You would have just looked at the spend and the a cost for those campaign types. Now, Amazon gave us a little uh, chart for it. Uh, so we've got total customers and repeat customers. So you can actually now track the impact of those win back strategies uh, or customer acquisition uh, strategies. Um, so if you were doing a brand tailored promotion for new customers, boom, you can track, you can plot new customers and new customer sales and orders on a chart like this, which is really, I really, I really like this because to me, now we have data that tells you to run a brand teller promotion. We have data that tells you to invest more in sponsored display, audience-based targeting. And they give you data that after you run it, you'll be able to refer to and measure the impact of that beyond just the A cost of the campaign. Mike, if we go to previous uh, section showing our repeat purchase order, something that actually we're discussing here, for repeat customer section, it shows you the number of customers, repeat purchase rate, average repeat purchase interval. So mm -hmm. for this brand that we have here, it says repeat purchase rate is 4%, 4.11%. Kind of, I can tell it's not a consumable product because otherwise this number should yeah. have been high. Average repeat purchase interval is 4.02 days. Mm -hmm. We were talking with Mike about this. This number doesn't make sense. While uh, you were talking, I was checking this. I, I think, are, are you looking at a monthly now or weekly, the data that you have here? Uh, is this monthly? This was a uh, month. This monthly. was the month of August. So now I understand why it is for this. The way it looks at it is that it says in that month, customers who purchased, purchased twice. It's looking at that month. It's not looking at past 12 months when I was looking yeah. at 
the uh, yes, when I was looking at the description. So if you look at the over a year, it's going to tell you over a year, you had this many customers purchased more than once. That is why that four day makes sense because it's saying that this month in August, for instance, 4% of your customers purchased again from August customers, right? And they purchased four days after they first purchased in August. It's not comparing to uh, last 12 months. It's just comparing to customers in that month. That's why this number is uh, small. Now, if you go look at day yearly, all of a sudden you might see for this brand, probably it's going to go to, I'm guessing to maybe 100 days, something like that. Yeah. I, well, I can pull it up here. Yeah. I can change so While you are pulling it up, I'm, I'm looking at this consumer product for a year, over a year. Their uh, average, uh, average purchase rate interval yeah. is 38 days. Makes yeah. sense now. This changes from four days to 20 days. 20 days. Yeah. So that, that makes sense. So yeah, when I first saw this too, I was like, what you're telling me that of all the repeat customers, like I was thinking people that purchased in January, now it's August, but you know, cause that would be a huge date range, but you're saying this report is telling you for the date range that you selected, if somebody purchases in that time frame and then also repurchases in that same time frame. So yeah, this makes sense. This particular brand only had 21 repeat customers. They purchased 50 things, uh, which by the way, uh, that's a good ratio. Like this is, they're purchasing more than two things. Um, Again, and the other reason it makes sense, I think you said it's a toy uh, product, right? Mm-hmm. That it, it it's toy. So the customers purchase a toy and like kind of interacted with this brand. They want another toy after very short yeah. period of time. They go to the yeah. same brand and they purchase another yeah, yeah. toy or maybe the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so. Again, it allows you to get a little bit more data points to invest a, in your advertising for this group, to invest in a brand tailored promotion for this group. Um, so yeah, so anything else we wanted to say about the trends of this data? Um, you know, we have the, the chart of what it looks like, and then we have some of the metrics that you can select here. So you can compare any of these, uh, any one of these versus any other, any other one of these. Uh, I think an interesting combo is going to be total customers, versus new customers, so uh, total customers versus uh, repeat customers. Um, so you can track that. Uh, yes, if you have a consumer product, that's a really yeah. valuable mm-hmm. data. This, this, this trend graph, actually, I love it because there are so much you can get from this. Yeah. And the way, actually, you were talking about this, the way you could look at it as of now is how to measure everything that you are doing, all your testing, all your advertising effort, external effort, what is happening. If you are seeing a drastic jump, if you are bringing huge external traffic, any effort that you are doing, you can come here and see how that is impacting your customers, your new customers, your Repeat purchase rate, your repeat customers, which, or average, do we have average order value here? I don't think so. Mm, doesn't Not look like really. it. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. So imagine for this brand, you were able to tell that story like, oh, we turned on, you know, brand teller promotions to boost repeat customers. We, t- we turned on uh, sponsored display audience based campaigns to get new repeat customers. And ideally, we watch that number go up. Uh, so yeah, so that would be really exciting. Yeah, to that's a great track. use case. Yeah, that's a I great think... use case. Right away, you do that because these are the customers who has purchased from you before. You have to all uh, right away see that that purchase rate, even in weekly, right? You see that purchase uh, repeat purchase rate is going up. Yeah, because yeah, you can break this down weekly. So yeah, I love this for that purpose. So now I'm thinking. You know, we've added another task to the Amazon marketer or the Amazon seller or the brand manager uh, task list for the end of the month or even the the end of the week. You know, you want to assess previous week of your new campaigns and your brand teller promotions like this can give you some insight. Um, 
So I really like the graph. And imagine this. if they give us the option of per ASIN. That's now is going to be yeah. game changer to look at it per ASIN and what's going on. Yeah. So we do not have it, of course, per ASIN just yet. Um, so yeah, so that was the first tab, the brand view. Uh, you know, similar to search query performance where they first released it for brands and then later they gave us ASIN view. This is just for brand view, uh, brand for the overall brand here. Um, and their level of segmentation down is actually each customer segment. Uh, so again, there are four customer segments here, top tier customers, promising customers, at risk, and hibernating customers. As I read these aloud, I don't love the names for them because I feel like if I look at the definitions of them, top tier makes sense. These are your top tier customers uh, who buy the most frequently and spend the most. Hibernating is a nice way to say uh, like potentially lost customer. Like these people haven't purchased in a long time. They rarely buy from you. And they say varied spend, which really means pro low probably. Maybe uh, low or high. It's, yeah, yeah, it's not like, really clear. It's varied. I just saw a meme that was like, how real estate agents describe this <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's like fixer upper means should be demolished. Um, so yeah, so like the word hibernating. Actually on the side note, there is this real estate. I was seeing the reels that two in order, the same person. This is the best market for buyers. Everything is great. Next reels, this is the best market for sellers. I'm like, how both of them could be true at the same time. <laughs> yeah, man, it's true. As a quick, another quick tangent, I saw a same video. It was like, uh, when you play with your kids, that's like the language uh, of love for them. So like when your kids ask you to play with them, they're really asking you like, do you love me? And then the ne literally the next video was like, if you're only playing with your kids and you're not letting them play with themselves, you're like, ruining them for life <laughs> just like what yeah wow. i think it's so funny okay so top tier customers promising customers at risk hibernating um so yeah promising i, I almost view promising as like mid-range customers at risk customers of like they're they might not be coming back and hibernating they haven't come back for quite some time um so yeah uh so segment here we can now begin to break things down. Um, so you pick a segment and it gives you some more information about that segment. Again, queuing us up for a promotion. Um, so here I selected the segment promising customers. Um, it just tells you how many of them and gives you a button to create the promotion. It takes you to brand tailored yeah. promotions. Fairly straightforward. This was pretty interesting. Uh, predictive customer lifetime value. Uh, so as we look at this one, you pick a segment. And there are three options, right? In the, in the screenshot, uh, you are not showing that. You are seeing on the top right corner, you can see it is maintaining. But we have three options to choose from that list. One is growing. Second one is maintaining. And third one is declining. So what it gives you is that for growing in this segment, the growing, uh, uh, the growing customers for that segment, what is their predicted next year sales, right? It, sh it shows you what was it last year, what it is going to be next year based on machine learning from Amazon. It gives you that, that uh, idea. Same for maintaining and declining. So you have an idea of what that customer lifetime value uh, is. But... How do you think, Mike, we can use this? There's a real need for Amazon brands to try to do some prediction. Like, wouldn't it be nice if you could go into Amazon and you could select next month, so we're in October. Imagine selecting November and it scanning through your account last year, you know, lifetime value, what the market is doing, and actually be able to try to predict what areas are going to be hotter and colder for you and potentially predict like, Hey, you know, your conversion rate has fallen compared to your competitors. So like we're predicting fewer sales for you. So like go do these things. That would be insane, right? Like that would be amazing. And this is like, not that obviously, 
but it's one sort of step in that right direction. So it's sort of telling you that, uh, so I'm, I'm scanning through an account right now. It's tell, it tells me how many top tier customers I have and that I'm expected to actually get more revenue from them in the next year, uh, which is kind of cool. So that growing segment of my top tier. And then it also tells me of the top tier customers, how many are fading away? Um, so it's actually telling me, so for this particular brand, uh, as I'm going through it, the biggest segment of my top tier is my declining, meaning my top tier is actually, I'm going to lose some customers out of my top tier because it says in the last year they spent $170, but they're expected to only uh, spend $88 with me in the next year. Well, actually, I'm looking at this. Um, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the the same, another brand in my site. Same thing? Yeah, the same thing. The climbing is higher percentage. I'm looking at quarterly uh, numbers, 24,000 in declining, and their last year's sales were 213. It is saying that the next year's sales will be 98. So it is a drastic decline, which it brings the question of, we know this now, how we can increase this, right? How we can get back these customers to uh, purchase more. Which yeah, the things comes to my mind is well first make sure to uh, give them some incentive, give them discount, yeah. uh, advertise the complimentary products to people who have purchased. You have to have in your PPC and DSV a kind of a good funnel, bottom of funnel because this is bottom of funnel, right? Mm-hmm. And kind of some of them are loyalty. How to make sure you are increasing the average order value for these customers, which complementary product, plus giving them the coupon codes and using, again, that brand tailored promotion to target this segment specifically. Yep. Yeah. Do, do everything. And then they give you a chart underneath to track the impact of that. So, you know, imagine you're looking at your segment, uh, so you can then view the segment and how that segment is sort of performing, uh, which is nice. So it's like, am I getting more of that segment or is that declining? So what's cool about this, it'll, it'll tell me, is my top tier getting bigger or is my top tier getting smaller, smaller. Uh, which is really nice. So again, it, it shows you from an audience perspective, uh, you know, this is just analytics. You know, these are, these are analytics on your brand so that you can be a better and more informed. So, you know, if you're losing top tier, as this particular brand was, you want to throw the kitchen, you want to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it. So, you know, that exactly what you mentioned. Um, so I like that. Uh, it does also have one more section down there, which is just defines the segment for you. Uh, gives you some segment metrics over here. Uh, Great Again. metrics, though. Yeah, they are. They are some. Yeah, they are some. Yeah, good information for the segments. What do you like the most here? Well, I I like the repeat purchase rate there, what that percentage is, and also that average average purchase uh, purchase interval. It's gonna give you better control if you want to calculate the customer lifetime value. These are the metrics that you need apart from what Amazon gives you. For, because Amazon gives you uh, uh, already customer lifetime value for different uh, growing, declining, or maintaining in that section. But for the whole segment, you could calculate the custom, uh, customer lifetime value with these uh, metrics. Yeah. You, and I also love the average orders per customer, um, meaning we all... I, Advertisers should have different goals for different types of campaigns. So, you know, when we talk about brands versus non-branded campaigns, I, I always think it's advisable to have a different set of goals for your non-branded campaigns. Be- and this sort of gives you some indication of that, you know, where, you know, if you can acquire a brand new customer, you can see, hey, you know, on average, they're going to purchase more than one order uh, over a particular time frame. 
So let's use that information to inform our ACoS. So maybe we have an ACoS for, you know, branded traffic target of like 5%, but maybe our non-branded traffic is a bit higher. Um, so I always think that's an interesting thing to incorporate. How much are we willing to spend to acquire a new customer? Uh, knowing that that ACoS, that immediate ACoS is going to be lowered over time through repeat purchases. So this does give you a, a sense of, you know, how many repeat customers and what are the repeat customers doing? Like, what are, what are my actual repeat sales? So I do enjoy that to help inform and have a conversation about goals for non-branded traffic. Plus on top of that, you have the average order value as well, right? So you can know each mm -hmm. order, what is the value of that average order value? That's a great point. And yeah, I feel like these informations are really valuable. Right now, the way I look at uh, this dashboard is mostly about monitoring, seeing the impact, getting more insight into numbers and how you are trending. But definitely there are use cases in terms of using in DSP. In PPC, it's more about, as we discuss, is more about you did that, what happened here? I increased my spend, I did more sponsored display targeting, or I uh, spend more sponsor brand video, sponsor product. What is happening? Are, am I bringing more new customers? Or no, my new customers are not increasing. I'm just targeting the same customers. So kind of it means you might be cannibalizing. So there are some uh good insights if you look at the data in different perspectives you might get from these trends you know there's a part of me that feels like if people are advertising on amazon and they're only in the default ad console the sponsored ads console and they never venture out to these other areas i think that they will eventually be outpaced by those that do meaning going into brand analytics and looking at some of this data and getting a sense of what is my repeat purchase rate? So truly what is my lifetime value of a customer? So actually I've been targeting a 30% ACoS on my ads. I can actually go up to a 35% and actually be in a growth phase and actually not hurt my profitability. Um, so I think those kinds of advertisers, I think there's one universal law in like paid media, which is, the person, the company who can spend the most profitably is going to win. So being able to sort of see this data and inform like, oh, you know, I can actually move up from 30 to 35% and actually not lose any, not like still may still have my profit targets, I think is a really interesting component. So it's just a, another reason to sort of don't be afraid of venturing outside of uh, the sponsored ads console and in exploring some of these. And at the very least, once a month, twice a month, look at it as a data point. Hmm, how are my repeat purchase campaigns doing? You know, how are my brand tailored promotions impacting my overall brand? That's a, that's a great point. Actually, from our experience, the brands that we see have highest growth are the brands that they are looking long term, right? What you mentioned. It is not like I want to achieve this A cost no matter what, you have to achieve this. What they are asking is that I want to grow, how we can grow. Tell me what should I do to grow? So it means we might aim for higher ACoS, higher than your target ACoS, in order to bring that long-term results, right? To bring more customers, to bring more incremental sales. That it is, it's like it's liable and on Amazon, you guys know, more PPC sales, better organic rank, increase, right? Increasing your uh, organic, more organic sales. So to your point, if you are only in Amazon advertising dashboard, you're going to be behind and you will keep losing market share because other brands doing a better job of looking long term and strategizing for that, not only for just short term ROI. Well said. Uh Let's finish there. Uh, Mansoor, where can people find you on the internet? LinkedIn is the best place to find me. I post content there and I'm hanging out there most of the time. Yes. Uh, well, you heard it there. Mansoor, thank you so much for coming back on the show. It genuinely is always a pleasure. 
uh, to catch up with you and have you on the show. Same here. Thank you so much for having me back. Yeah, have a good one. You too.